Good morning, kiddos. This is Mr. B, and this is the how-to for your Week 8 artwork. And this is ultimately, there is a static image in the module this week, but this is ultimately what you're going to be making. Let's get this little guy away. There we go. And now you can see everything that is there. I would recommend this week that you use uh, a ballpoint pen or a, I caught it, pencil. Uh, as there's a lot of uh, small detail this week, we are getting away from uh, just this week, probably, our um, pitch space class wheel. Uh, we are now halfway through the school year, and I think it's time, even though we're really a performance art class, that it's time for us uh, to start looking at notation a little bit more seriously. As in trimester three, we're going to start getting into uh, chord structure. So um, this is the, again, how-to for how to do this week's art. Here's a static image to copy, and this is the explanation for how to formally go through all of the steps. Uh, the first thing that you're going to want to do is one line down from the top of the page, you're going to want to draw five horizontal lines. And just continue them on through the end of the page. Spaces is what you're going to need, um, and then draw another set of five lines. What you are building right now is a staff. S T A F F, just like a stick or a line. And so there are five lines in a staff. Now, the type of staff that we are uh, we've drawn um, is ultimately going to be in the treble clef. And here is the proper way, twice, I'm going to show you how to properly draw a treble clef symbol. You start with one line above the top line, and you're going to finish at one line below, uh, at one line <coughs> here below the bottom. So we're going to start here at the top, and you're going to draw a straight line down. And as you come down to this bottom, you can make a little ball kind of at the end, curving inward this way. Now there are a couple of touch points we're going to hit. We're going to want to hit this line in particular. <coughs> Another line we're going to want to hit is this, and we're going to start at the top. So we're going to come down from the top to the right swooping around, and then we're making a big swirl as we finish right there. The treble clef should come above the top of the staff. The treble clef should come below the bottom of the staff, and this little button here should be where there would be an imaginary line. Um, we're going to draw that one more time so that we see it. And this is our second uh, staff. Two staffs, the plural of staff is stave. And here we go, straight down all the way through, little button at the end. We're going to make sure we can hit that spot, and then this spot is this spot I want to go through. Coming through and around, and then swirling right at the end. So those are two treble clefts that have been drawn. Now, in terms of knowledge uh, base, what the expectation is, we're, we're just getting into this nomenclature, so I'm going to put a little reference to the side here that I think is really important. And these are the spaces. G E C A F D and B. And sometimes there's a mnemonic for remembering that <coughs> the spaces moving upward are F A C E. That's a fair mnemonic. But I think it's also important that you see the overall pattern and what is occurring generally. So if I were to also then look at the lines, the lines would be A, F, D, B, G, E, 
C, and A. And you can notice there's a pattern. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. So we're alternating each time in terms of lines and spaces to produce that clef. Uh, this week we are performing at 90 beats per minute. This is an example of a quarter note. <coughs> and in this case our time signature is three quarters. This is acting, the center line is acting as sort of the vinculum in our fraction, but it's really not a fraction, it's a time signature. And this is telling us that there are three beats per measure and the quarter note gets the beat. So we know we're going to be working in three quarter time when we make our music this week. And the other thing that we want to note is sort of the emphasis this week, what is the key signature? Well, it, typically there would be on the line directly either a sharp or a flat to indicate the notes that are going to be sharp or flat in that particular key. And while we're not getting into um, that whole topic really until trimester three, it's important to know that this is C major. And the way we know that is that there are no sharps at or flats, and that equals C major, and that is the key. Uh, that means we're only playing the white keys uh, effectively for the most part. Now there is an incidental if we were to fully play this, um, but we're not going to get into that right now. We're just focused on this introduction. So what I also did is I looked historically at the Star Spangled Banner and I found uh, the original reference, which, you know, it, the, the resource that I provided you this week is from Wiki, um, but I discovered that there's an older version of the intro to the Star Spangled Banner that is really more appropriate for us uh, and we'll get more of that in the performance, but for drawing it this week, the way that works is this. We have a quarter note here, which is going to be at our, at our C, and it's a solid note. And then we're going to have a G, which is going to be right here. And that's often why the treble clef is referred to as the G clef, because this little spirally bit stops right here at the G. So this is again an introduction to such things. Our next note is our E. And the last note that we're going to draw is a C. Now we want to make sure that we draw that with a measure having been defined. This is the first measure and this is coming into the second measure and the note that we're going to draw there is this, which is a C. Now, this is what's called a ledger line. We're putting that note in here. And it's open because it's a half note. It's equal to two quarter notes. We'll put our little stem out there. A little poor in terms of my drawing, but that's working for now. So that's that. And again, this should be identified that this, when you draw a ledger line, in this case, this one is what is middle C. And just remember that that is the C3 on the iPad. In scientific pitch notation, it really is um, C4. But on the iPad, that notation is C3. And other MIDI devices use, that, use a similar notation. Um, then the next part, and this is the introduction to uh, the Star Spangled Banner that I recovered from the original version uh, written by a guy named Thomas Carr. And he borrowed really the music for the banner, for the Star Spangled Banner, um, and he was hired to do it by keys. And then here is our next note, and it is a dotted quarter note. That means it plays a little bit longer than the standard value of one beat for a quarter note. And that is a G, again, right here in line with where the little curly Q is on the treble clef. Then the next note that we're going to play is an E. Now these get joined together. And these are effectively um, an extended eighth note. And 
uh, an abbreviated sixteenth note. So this dot on this eighth note, and, when, and an eighth note would be uh, a quarter note with a little flag on it, and that's what this is. But these are tied together. We'll get more into those conversations, and that's a little uh, symbol that indicates that we're bringing those notes together, we're playing them together as as one collection of notes, and that is where our second measure actually would end. That's the beginning of the second measure. It ends here. And this would be the beginning of what would be our third measure. Our third measure, we have another ledger line. And we're going to draw in our C. And that's our middle C. And then we're going to draw in an E. And then we're going to draw in a G. And then we're going to go ahead and close our measure. And then we're going to go ahead and put in a C. And again, this is a, a half note, so it's open, hollow in the middle. That drawn like that would be a whole note, putting a, uh, a stem on it makes it a half note. And this is where the fourth measure would begin. And certainly the song continues to go on. Now the notes that we're going to put on here are at the top. The title of this is uh, The Key to Key. And it is from C to C. Now, that's a little bit of an inside joke for those who uh, are interested in such things. There was competition at the time for what was going to be uh, the national anthem. And America the Beautiful uh, was in competition. And in that, there's a lyric that says, From C to Shining Sea, which is kind of why this is interesting, because in our introduction, we're starting at C, we come all the way down, and using that traditional introduction, comes back to C. And then we've got our phrase that we sing, oh, C, can you see? And then we finish on, again, C. Uh, and interestingly enough, the, and the word that we're going to say is C. That's our lyric we're going to write in here. Um, so the key to C from C to C. And I'm going to leave out in, in your version... Uh, what else is up here, but this is a historically and fundamentally accurate intro to uh, the U.S. National Anthem. So I'm just going to put the intro to U.S. National Anthem. Okay. Now in terms of uh, some of our, our hints here in terms of performance, I do, you can go ahead and write above these so you're getting some reinforcement about what these notes are so in this case c g e and then c again and then g is here and then e is here and then this is c and again this is e and then this is g and then this is c again now when you play this um, and again, it's three-quarter time, so it's one, two, three. You're going to play it one, two, three. This gets one, two. This actually just gets one beat, three. And again, our quarter note gets the beat. A quarter note is two eighth notes, which would have the flags. This whole thing equals just one beat. And then this is one, two, three three, and then this is going to give us one, two. And yes, our third beat would be going on if we were to continue on into the song. Our lyric uh, that we have is O. Oh. It's not Oh Ho. It's not Santa Claus. It's O. Oh. And then Say Can You See. And for our purposes, it's an exclamation point and a question mark. And now this is the crossover this week in terms of language arts. We want to make sure that you really understand that when you uh, use information derived from other people, that you give them credit for their work, that you're not guilty of plagiarism. So uh, here are some examples of credit and, and ultimately a proper reference uh, for today. Um, this is the lyrics here are by Francis.
got key. Okay. And the music is by a guy named Thomas Carr. He doesn't get talked about a lot, but he's the guy initially that key hired, and he borrowed music from another song to make this happen. The version that most of us know is the John Stafford Smith version. Now you are going to put down here that this was illustrated by you. This is where your name should go. So your first name here and your last name goes here. Okay, And you are creating this Eighth grade music. Okay, this is eighth grade music, and this in your case you're going to put what down your period is fifth period if that's where you're at. Okay, and this is ultimately the other thing I wanted to add here is that this is uh, week eight, and there is an emphasis here on the minor sixth. The minor sixth actually occurs here between the E and the C. So between E and C, make yourself one of those little shapes right there. That interval right there is in fact our minor sixth. And I'll emphasize that a little bit in our in our video on the performance. Uh, the date today, whenever you do your work, uh, today is the 25th for me. One. And then the last, and certainly not least, this is really the emphasis of our crossover this week, is reference. And typically, you start a reference hard to the left, and in this case, it's HTTP. This is where I found the information. Now, I would rather that you reference Wikipedia for all the judgment that it gets, then not reference it. Meaning, if Wiki is where you got your information, well then, so be it. And in the past, it was a far greater taboo than it is today, uh, as the quality of Wiki has improved a great deal. But still, it should not be your only source. This just happens to actually be a really good one. Um, and so our reference is HTTP and this is a colon. These are forward slashes, they mean forward. en.m.wikipedia.org forward slash wiki forward slash capital the underscore star underscore spangled underscore banner. And I put a period here. There is no period. There should be no code there at all. Otherwise that's not going to function for you. And that is the how-to and the example of how to do the art for week eight. Thank you all very much.